Well, we are beginning a new video series where we're going to interview Seattle alumni, hopefully throughout the season, bring you up to date on what a lot of the players who used to play with the T-Birds are doing these days. And we're excited to, to have on our first ever uh, interview a former T-Birds captain and a big part of uh, what happened to this organization becoming such a winning culture going back to the, those three or four years where they missed the playoffs. And so we're very excited to be able to bring in with us uh, Jared Smith and have him join us. Jared, uh, welcome to the show and congratulations on being our first guest. Oh, thank you. And thanks for having me on. I'm uh, excited to be on the show. Well, let, let's just start off uh, before we talk about your time with the T-Birds and your hockey career, uh, what you're up to now and how things are going in your life since you uh, departed the world of hockey. Yeah, so I retired um, roughly two years ago now from playing hockey. I was playing overseas in France, and now I'm uh, currently in insurance. I'm an insurance broker and uh, specialize with uh, tech companies and we do standalone cyber insurance. So it's been a big adjustment uh, getting uh, used to the nine to five, but I uh, really enjoyed it and I found myself in a pretty good spot here. And what about on a personal level? Is there any big news uh, in your life? <laughs> there is. I just had a, a boy two months ago. So, uh, yeah, dealing with the little one. And, uh, yeah, it's been great. I mean, uh, me and my wife are both super excited and, uh, yeah, I love coming home to him every day. So it's definitely been a whirlwind, but um, really great so far. So, so when is his uh, WHL draft year, just so we know when he'll be joining the, uh, the Thunderbirds? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was thinking about that the other day. So he was born in 2023. So I think it would be you get drafted when you're 15. Oh man, it's been a while. So I guess uh, 2038. Holy moly, I'm aging myself now. Yeah, you know that's it's funny you say that because when I was looking up your your stats, uh, both in the Western Hockey League and your time at the uh, University of British Columbia, and as you mentioned, you played two years professionally over in, in France. Uh, it said. Jarrett Smith, 28. And I thought, can he really be 28 years old? I mean, uh, <laughs> seven plus seasons ago, you were playing for the Thunderbirds. It, it, time is flying by, but uh, let's go back to your time with Seattle. Uh, like a number of players who make it in this league, you were never drafted in the WHL. You were listed by Seattle. Is that because you were at that time looking at potentially NC2A as an option why do you think maybe you did not get drafted or was that the reason? Um, I think maybe just because I was a bit of a late bloomer growing up. I mean, um, I don't know. I didn't get drafted that year. It kind of maybe gave me a little bit of a chip on my shoulder coming into different camps there. And I had a great opportunity with Seattle that year and, you know, and ended up coming in as a 17 year old and got a lot of playing time and the coaches trusted me and then just kind of went forward from there. But yeah, it wasn't anything to do with the NCAA road. I mean, I was thinking that at the time, but uh, yeah, it just, uh, just didn't happen for me in the draft. Well, you were with the uh, Thunderbirds between 2012 and 2016, uh, 281 regular season games, 24 goals, 94 assists, 118 points, and then in the playoffs, 39 games of postseason play, 12 uh, uh, three goals, 12 assists, 15 points, and obviously you were uh, – Captain for the Thunderbirds, your final year in the Western Hockey League and part of that uh, 2016 Western Hockey League Western Conference Championship team, which kind of was the the team that kind of got this uh, franchise off and running through what has been a terrific uh, run here where they have captured four Western Conference titles, two U.S. divisions and uh, two Ed Chanel Cups. And you came up just short in 2016 as part of that team uh, losing in, in the final to Brandon uh, it was a much closer series, though, than I think that the the final would indicate. They won it in five games, four to one. There was those two overtime games in particular. I you know the first three games did go overtime, but those first two in Brandon on the road, uh, you think back on those and you think what might have been? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's something that's always in the back of your mind, especially getting so close that year and then just coming up a little bit short there. And then, yeah, it's definitely – it was tough to see them win the next year. I mean, so happy for them, but, you know, it's uh, – <laughs> I wish it could happen for us that year. I mean, we had a great team, but I mean, so happy for the guys to be able to pull it through and then see all the success the teams uh, had since. It's uh, something pretty special. It seems like they got a good group again this year. So it should be exciting again moving forward. 
what about that group? And if I talk to probably your teammates from that team, the, the, the players who came back the next year and won it, and the players on the roster the last two years that have gone to the final, they'll all, all say almost to a man the, uh, the teams were, was close-knit, a very tight group. What does that mean, though, if you're telling a fan that we were a tight group and that's why we had so much success? How does that, um, how does that work into the equation of winning a championship? Um, I just think everybody really bought into the system, what the coaches were preaching. And then, you know, nobody was bigger than themselves. Um, everybody kind of kept their egos in check. And if you were assigned a role to do, even if you thought, you know, maybe you were in line for a bigger role or something like that, everybody kind of just bought in and really did their job. And not only that, we were really close, um, close together as a group. I think they had a big group of 97s as well. That was a really tight knit group. I saw that there was a wedding this summer for, uh, for Ethan Barron. I think almost all those guys were in his wedding party still. So um, yeah, it was just a really special team. And yeah, it was really fun to be a part of that that, that year. After your, your time with the, uh, the Thunderbirds, you then went on to play four seasons at the uh, University of British Columbia. So you stayed a Thunderbird. Uh, yeah. Had some success up there at uh, UBC, playing 109 games there with uh, 20 goals, 48 assists, 68 points. Uh, but obviously, that was a twofold situation. You got a chance to use the education uh, money that you earned being in the Western Hockey League to further your education at UBC. Yeah, I mean, it was a great opportunity for me at the time and kind of had to chose um, which road I was going to go. And at the end of that year, I ended up getting uh, shoulder surgery after the season. So uh, I ended up going to UBC. And honestly, I can't speak enough about how great that uh, uh, that program was with uh, Sven Butenshawn coaching it over there. It was a really great opportunity for me. And yeah, it was fun. It was at the end, uh, it kind of had the same thing. My last year there, we made it to... Um, the championships for the first time in a long time, similar to uh, Seattle, but it ended up getting canceled because of COVID. So it's kind of snake bitten twice on my uh, two Thunderbird careers, but uh, still had a really, uh, really good time at UBC as well. And I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you you met up with a former T-Bird up there in Ryland Toth, because I think I saw both of you at a game up in Langley at one point uh, when Seattle was playing a uh, the Vancouver Giants. So uh, you guys got a chance to play together there. Yeah, it was pretty special because I missed him at my time with Seattle because he came in the year after me. So uh, I remember when he was coming to the team, I was asking some of the guys what he's like and they're like, oh, he's a great guy. You're going to love him. So yeah, it was great to have him part of the team at UBC. And uh, yeah, he was a really special player as well. It's kind of weird because as you mentioned, you just missed winning a championship the year before. He was on that championship team, but he was injured. And uh, the story was Carl Stankowski, uh, the young, you know, backup goalie who kind of was, uh, you know, the big story of Seattle winning that playoff run and how well he played. And I'm wondering if uh, Ryland ever talked to you about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we definitely talked about it a couple of times and I'm sure uh, I'm sure that was tough for him. But honestly, he only spoke positive things about the whole experience. And uh, um, I know he, just playing for us, he was a really special goalie. So I know Carl got hot when Ryland was hurt, but I think if Ryland was in there too, he would have done a great job as well. Now you mentioned you went overseas and you played uh, two seasons over in in France. Uh, how did you end up you know, in the, that league in France? Uh, there's obviously a lot of options over overseas for players to go over and play. What came into your decision to go play there? It was kind of funny. I was going to go back um, that year and finish my fifth year at UBC, but uh, it was during the COVID and I found out the hockey season was going to be canceled. We weren't going to be playing. And the coach in France ended up used to be, or used to be the assistant coach in Everett when I played in the league um, under, he assisted with Kevin Constantine there. And then he kind of reached out to me and said, Hey, I saw you play in Seattle. Would you be interested to be, you know, come over and play in France? And I had a couple guys who played in UBC that were already over there. And they spoke high, uh, good things of the city and the team. And yeah, just a really good opportunity for me to go over there. And uh, I had a fantastic experience both years there. So unfortunately, the first year was kind of during COVID. So it was a little it was a little different playing hockey over there. But the second year, it was back to normal. And yeah, we ended up winning the French Cup that year. And it was a pretty special experience for sure. So you finally got your cup. 
Yeah, finally. Yeah, I was going to say, I had to go out with something. So it was nice to have my final year uh, get to win a championship. So, yeah, it was pretty special. Yeah, and I'm, I'm assuming that, that that coach is Jay Veraday, the former assistant up in in Everett? Uh, no, it wasn't. No. It was. Uh, he's the uh, current coach of Saskatoon right now. Oh, oh right in Sony. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was going blank on his name for a second, but... Yeah, he was uh, over there for my first year, and then the second year we had a different coach. But uh, he was the one who brought me over and recruited me. And yeah, he was uh, had a great time with him as well. He was a fantastic coach. So uh, you going back to your time in the Western Hockey League with the Thunderbirds, uh, obviously terrific success. Uh, as you mentioned, you came in right after they had that string of uh, non-playoff years where they were finishing below 500. You never experienced that. Your time here, they always had a, a winning record and, and eventually got to that championship series that started this this run. So obviously a lot of great memories. But uh, what about that roster? Who are the players that you're still in contact with uh, from that team uh, to this day? I mean, quite a few. Um, I was actually just at um, I'm still really good friends with Shea Theodore. So we were roommates down when I lived in Seattle and I was just at his wedding this summer. And I got to see uh, Keegan Colzar was there as well. And Taylor Green was there um, as well from the team. So it was good to see those guys. And um, Justin Hickman, I'm still, he's now lives in Vancouver. I'll see him every now and then. Um, but there's still quite a few of the guys on the team that I still uh, reach out to. And uh, yeah, it was a pretty special group. It was fun being there from, I remember my first year uh, coming to Seattle. <laughs> We had, I think, like one of the longest losing streaks of all time that year. It was something like 16 or 17 games in a row, I think, we lost. And, and we ended up turning around and making playoffs. And that was the year we got reverse sweep. It was my first year. And it just seemed from that season on, kind of took a step in the right direction moving forward. And, yeah, it's been on the right track ever since. So it's definitely, it was exciting to be a part of uh, those teams and, you know, some of those experiences. So how hard was it to decide that uh, you were going to step away from, from pro hockey? And is it completely out of your system or is there a possibility that somewhere down the line you might uh, re-engage with that thought? Um, definitely not playing. I mean, with the little one now, my primary focus is going to be on him, but I would like to maybe get involved in hockey in the future. Uh, maybe I do still coach um, uh, in the summers. Um but we'll see again, my time is limited, but yeah, it was a real tough decision for me. I mean, it's such a big part of your life. And I mean, it's almost 12 years of doing semi pro to pro kind of hockey. And yeah, it was a big commitment and it's definitely been a big adjustment getting used to the nine to five, but being able to go to school and, you know, get back in the swing of things of, uh, I was taking finance at UBC at the time. So the transition I don't think was as hard for me. Um, but Again, it's still, uh, yeah, there's still some days that I miss getting back out on the ice every day or going to practice or seeing the guys in the room. It's it's definitely something that I'll always cherish. Well, with the, the little one there, I'm sure you'll have plenty of time to coach uh, <laughs> him up. Yeah. And as we mentioned, hopefully at some point in the future, we're calling his name at the Western Hockey League Prospects draft. But, Jared, we appreciate your time uh, joining us here today on this interview, and we wish you success. And don't be a stranger uh, whether you stop by when the team's up in, in Langley and, and check in on the club or just, hey, if you have some time, come on down here to Kent and uh, watch the team at the Accesso Shore Center. You're certainly welcome anytime. Yeah, sounds good. I really appreciate you having me on. And yeah, I'd love to get down there and I'll be at the Langley game for sure. So again, that's Jared Smith, the former captain of the T-Birds, uh, part of that 2015-16 Western Conference championship team and our guest here in our first interview of our alumni series.